Hello, I'm William Gallagher. This is 58 keys. Wait, hang on. How many keys are on? I think it's, well, it's less than 58. Can't be that. That can't be the reason this is all called 58 keys. One day I'll find out. Anyway, this is 58 keys. And as ever, it is about how writers like you and me can get more out of our typewriters and Macs and iPhones and iPads. Actually, I learned to type on a manual typewriter. It means my pinky can lift girders. Uh, but apparently, actually, I've forgotten you need to put paper in them. OK, it's been a while, a tiny little bit of a while. Well, actually, I, I have a friend who writes everything by hand first, then types it on a typewriter, then types it up on a Mac. And most of the time, I quite admire him because, you know, I mean, you're a writer, you know, each time he's redoing is what he's really doing is editing the text, massaging it. He's altering the text on the way and the end result must be better. But there does have to be an end result, and ultimately it does have to be on a computer. Myself, I write uh, directly onto my Mac, iPad or iPhone. I mean, it's quicker, of course, but also I prefer it because I, I think through the keys. Typing is not transcribing words from my head into a screen, it's finding those words. And I find them through a word processor, or two, or several. This time, what I would love to do is to show exactly how to find the one, the precise writing tool or word processor for you. In reality, what I think I can do is show you how to narrow the enormous choices down so that you can give a few a go and find out what's really best for you. You do need to know there may not be just one. On a bad day, I will use, I mean, I counted this yesterday, I will use up to eight different word processors and I am trying to cut down. So, I believe that I can get you within reach of the right word presses, or very far down the road, in about four steps. Call it four steps and one definition. I am going to say word processor a lot today, but in practice there are word processors, there are text editors, and there are note-taking apps. So, a word processor, it's something that's built for writing anything up to and including giant seven volume fantasy novels and hundreds of thousands of words. I mean, not only are they waiting for you to type all of those, they have tools that will help you manage them all, to manage to handle this heavy lifting kind of writing. Text editors, they're meant to be much more bare bones, basic, just get something out of your head, get it down and then worry about it later. You can write hundreds of thousands of words in them, but you'd best not want to fiddle around with those words too much along the way. Yeah, no, let's leave it at that. Note-taking apps, truly, these are meant for little scraps of text, one-liners, a paragraph, or more likely research that you've copied off a website. And again, you can write a novel in there if you want, but it won't help you do it, it won't help you along the way. And actually, I think it's also going to be a bit fiddly getting all of that text out into a place you can use it, which brings me to the first of our four important steps toward choosing the right word processor for you. This is, this is going to sound wrong. It's going to sound the wrong way around. But rather than starting uh, with, with you and what you need, what do other people need from you? In other words, uh, I mean, who are you writing for? If you're writing a book, Ultimately, a publisher is going to want that text in Microsoft Word. It doesn't mean you have to write it in Word. It does mean you have to deliver it in Word format. If you're writing for online, for example, where uh, that's very different, you're probably not going to be writing very long pieces. It's not going to be an 80,000 word novel, but you will definitely need to deliver in plain text. Uh, then there are more specialised examples. Scripts tend tend to be delivered in uh, either final draft format or, or PDF. PDF is common now, uh, but the good thing is um, your computer can handle it, especially if you've got a Mac. I do remember ages ago being at a PC trying to create a PDF and it just wouldn't, not without installing extra software. And at the time I was using a BBC PC and they blocked you adding anything, even if you were willing to pay even more money. This is a while ago. I'm sure it's fixed and fine. Uh, Macs, iOS, all of this. You don't have to care about PDFs because they just all do it for you. So anything you can write with, especially on a Mac or an iPad or an iPhone, it will create a PDF. You can forget about it. You don't have to think about this. 
and equally you probably don't have to think very much about word or plain text either you just need to know about them and know they exist and check that any word processor you're using will handle them what device are you going to write on the most I mean that's probably a choice between uh, tablet and computer iPad and Mac isn't it I mean you can write on a phone and we do I have you can you will but it's not ideal although actually I mean a reasonably large screen phone with an external keyboard amazing my entire office in my pocket whatever you're going to write on though look for a word processor that works on every device you're going to use the same one on all of them because I don't want you to spend your writing time trying to remember that control or command s saves on the computer but the tablet app saves by itself I mean I just I just don't want you fiddling about trying to remember where in the world the book you're writing is saved most recently so actually there are two parts of that aren't there I mean whichever word processor you like or anything else um, firstly use the same one on both a computer and a tablet if you don't have both devices yet well still check that they will work on both because at some point you're bound to and that's the bit think of that as the bit that you're going to be actually physically typing at but there's this related thing with uh, had to do with what where you save things where things end up when you're done writing okay so I have a novel on my iPad and I want to write the next chapter on my Mac I can email the document between the devices this is so bad so bad backups okay but just so bad you lose track of which device has which version and okay yeah you write the next chapter on the Mac but then you forget that and you're out somewhere and you think of it and you write the chapter afterwards on your iPad and now you have two completely different documents and just you know good luck with that or you can use a word processor that handles all of this for you Ulysses on the Mac and iOS is, is the easiest example to describe let me show you instead of opening the word processor and then opening or or saving your writing as a, a document on its own everything you write anything you write stays within the app it's like Ulysses contains its own library of everything you've written everything you're writing this is meant to simplify things in that you don't even have to name your documents they just stay in there I think that leads to me getting confused and trying to sort between different untitled documents or, or untitled sheets as Ulysses calls them uh, but it is definitely fantastic to know that whatever device you pick up whatever one's near you you just pick it up and everything you're writing is there or part three you could use the cloud we've all heard the cloud this is a good thing for it you get to make a name and save individual documents and you can organize them in any way you want but you save them to this cloud place that means they are automatically available and copied to all of your devices right away without you doing anything uh, right at the moment this comes down to three options really there's Google Docs which saves everything in Google Drive and unless you, you know, wrestle with it that's one um, otherwise these days for an Apple user the options are iCloud and Dropbox if you have to work with PCs as well if you work across them both then iCloud's kind of it's effectively out um, there are technical differences between them all but I'm honestly not that fussed whichever one works works the only thing that's really important to me is when you use Scrivener Scrivener is one that can't use iCloud it has to use Dropbox ultimately because there's a Windows and a Mac version they all fit together there are lots of reasons really and they're all fine I'm not in any way criticizing Scrivener but it is the one that I remember you have to use Dropbox for and there are other similar things you need to watch out for we'll come to those and other things I'm more concerned about money actually because there's a free version of Dropbox that gives you two gigabytes of storage space you will fill it at some point you will want to pay for more Dropbox space it might take a while though if you have an Apple device of any description you have iCloud for free and that gives you five gigabytes of free space now even though that is more than you get for free with Dropbox the trouble is you're getting one five gigabyte dollop of space regardless of how many Apple devices you have which is okay it's the same with Dropbox but all of these devices are using that space for themselves to do different bits for you so you actually are probably going to sooner run out of iCloud space and need to buy more than you would Dropbox all of which uh, buying space choosing where you save documents um, knowing what your publisher or website needs 
all of them crucially important. I just think that step four is even more important. Choose one you like. Okay, now you can check with a Google search or a hunt through the WordPress's official site for everything technical, like uh, what devices they're on, uh, what they save to, you know, anything from, uh, you can check the price even. Anything that's a factual thing you can check easily. But far more important is whether you just like the word processor that you're using. And I am not kidding, not even in the slightest bit kidding. If you weren't a writer, well, I expect you'd be, you'd be shrugging and saying, what's the difference? You type words in all of them, don't you? And maybe if you weren't a writer, I'd be weighing up whether or not we had time for a seven hour lecture. As you are a writer though, we can skip this bit because you already know it. I possibly haven't experienced it yet, but if you haven't, you're going to. There is an enormous difference between word processors, even on the same device. If I'm on my Mac and I turn from Pages to Microsoft Word, they feel different. I swear the keyboard I'm typing on feels different. I mean, it literally is not, and it literally cannot be, but it feels different. I think this goes back to how we used to be fussed over which uh, type of pen or pencil we like, or maybe even further back, maybe back to when we cared which crayon we used. The cold fact, as far as there can be any cold facts in this, is that you are going to be spending at least thousands of hours typing into your word processor. If there's something about it that grates, that irritates you, those thousands of words are just, they're going to be grumpy, aren't they? This is actually why I don't write in Google Docs or you know, whatever they call it today. Google makes amazingly powerful software. All of it, I mean, all of it is quite incredible. But A, I, I am more concerned about than Google is about my privacy. And two, Google has no taste. Google software is designed by engineers. And as much as I admire engineers, they don't tend to produce apps that you can immediately understand or, or which look any good. They're concerned, can it do a thing? They make it happen, which is great. But I find Google Docs ugly. And I write at least nine hours a day. I mean, certainly every weekday, typically several hours on weekends too. In fact, actually, I worked this out. I worked it out on my fingers and using wolframalpha.com, by the way, to check how many Saturdays and Sundays there are in each year. Love that site. It adds up to, uh, in 2020, I will have written 2,566 hours. I thought it'd be more. You're thinking about holidays, but no, I'm a writer. We don't do that. Uh, plus, actually, the figure per day changes enormously. Uh, yesterday, I think I did 12 hours at this desk. I know the day before it was 20. I mean, whatever it is, it's a lot. Every second of 2,566 hours, if it makes me unhappy, that's 9 million miserable seconds. Writing is hard enough without, say, Google Docs looking kludgy or Microsoft Word boasting that it's recovered a document for me. And what I want is for it to not lose the document in the first place. How to pick one you like, okay? The, the only real way to find a WordPress that you enjoy is to try everything out. Call it extended research. Call it an excuse not to write, or better, yeah, better yet, call it an excuse to write more as you experiment with different apps. Um, Apple users start with pages. You know, you've already got it. Uh, but then look around at at least the major alternatives. The steps I've told you through will sort you through things, but you might well find that Google Docs does suit you more than it does me, and that's free as well. With everything else, yes, you have to pay, but you can get a free trial. I'm, I'm fine, more than fine with paying. It's just uh, a free trial is really handy. Typically two weeks to try something out, something like that, good. That includes Microsoft Word, um, which actually, for all that I just criticized it, is pretty excellent on iPads. At the moment. I think less so on Macs, but you know, there you go. I don't know any uh, apps, writing apps that are particularly suited to poetry. But if you are, if you write scripts, take a look at Final Draft, take a look at Highland 2. I've provided links to all of these, by the way, but you know, a swift Google search will turn them up for you too. I think you will find one that suits you, but I know this will change too. The same steps, the same results, over time things change. I mean, maybe you take on script writing when you don't at the moment, or maybe you just get weary of nine million seconds in anything and want to try anything else. Go for it.
There's no technical reason to change word processor apps, but there are these psychological ones. And actually, this is a no, right, we're so strange. Seeing your draft in a different word processor, it helps me read that text with fresh eyes. So use these steps, try many word processors, keep on trying them. And if you write in them all, you're writing, which is what we want. Uh, let's see, I think I just, didn't I just name pages, Word, Scrivener, Final Draft, Highline 2, Google Docs, I think that was it. I also write a lot actually in Omni Outliner, and there's already a, a 58 Keys episode about that, which is uh, linked in the show notes. Uh, 58 Keys is going to cover each of these apps and more in detail in their own separate episode, because there's a lot to say, and there's so much to show you about each of them. But I already guarantee that one of them is going to suit you because writing apps are amazing. They are yet another reason why I am certain computers were invented for writers. Certain. That's it for 58 Keys this time. Thank you for watching. Do please try out the YouTube subscribe button and uh, see how very much you enjoy clicking or tapping on that. And I'll see you soon.